Jesus. Well, I'm excited for tonight. I felt like an expectation. I got this like fire I'm feeling. So get ready, put your seatbelts on, prepare. Okay. Um, let's see, Roxanne, do you have a word you want to share? Okay. We got a couple testimonies that we're going to uh, start with tonight. Well, this uh, testimony isn't necessarily mine, but it's for my wife, but uh, she's at home watching our, our daughter. So if you're watching, sweetie, love you, and you're a fulfillment of the promise that the Lord will do exceedingly abundantly beyond all we can ask or imagine. So, <laughs> but anyway, um, <laughs> yeah, I'm a blessed man. I really am. <laughs> but anyway, um, Tess, uh, where do I start with this? Um, my wife has been, she's been baptized in the Holy Spirit, but she's been, uh, asking for the gift of tongues for quite a while now. And um, so uh, I've been praying for her for that too. But I remember this Friday night, well, Saturday, early morning, I wake up around 2 a.m. just out of the days and I look and my wife's not sleeping in the bed next to me. I'm like, okay, where is she? I'm looking around the house, look in the bathroom, all the places. I'm like, okay, she's probably downstairs. This is something the Lord has been doing a lot in her recently where he'll wake her up in the middle of the night just to pray, but also to be dancing before him in worship and thankfulness. And so I'm like, she's probably downstairs. So I'm about to go down and say, hey, maybe I'll join her. her but, and she comes up and there's tears in her eyes. And another thing about that is my wife is an intercessor. And one thing about that is when she prays for something, especially like she's crying out for the Lord's intervention, she really lets herself feel what's going on. But So I go like, hey, you okay? Did you just go through some gnarly warfare or something? She goes like, no, I'm, I'm really good. And I go like, okay, she had an encounter, but at this point I'm tired. I'm like, let's go to bed. And so I notice when she's laying down in bed next to me, she's praying in tongues. And I'm like looking over at her going like, okay, I'm tired, but I can't go to sleep because just the amount of glory that she was bringing into the room was amazing. And also, brutal honesty, she was making noise so I couldn't go back to sleep anyway. <laughs> but anyway, I'm like, yeah, tomorrow I'm going to ask her what the Lord did. And so we next morning, I'm like, you were praying in tongues for about an hour before we went to bed last night, weren't you? And she goes like, yeah, I actually was. I'm like, okay, what happened? And exactly that, she was just downstairs uh, 
praying and dancing and just singing before the Lord, just trying not to wake me up. But, and she says, yeah, at one point I felt in my spirit just a groaning happening and I just felt led to pray in a different way. And all of a sudden I felt the Lord just give me the gift of tongues and she just started. And I'm like. <laughs> Steve, thanks. thanks for sharing. Yeah. Sweet. So that's for anyone else here that hasn't received that you get it too. Um, I'm going to get one more testimony from Aubrey, if you want to share. Let's give it up for Aubrey. Hello. Um, <laughs> I traveled with David Hogan for a little bit a few years back, and um, this was my first time traveling with him. I've, he's known me my whole life, but... I started like um, getting really excited and thinking of like all the things I can't wait to tell him and Mama Hogan and I was like, oh, I have this idea, like I'm gonna have all these topics ready. So I have like, there'll always be conversation going. <laughs> and so <laughs> we get, um, we meet up in New Zealand and get in the car and we already talked and like spent a few days bef before that together. And um, we get in the car and I'm like, oh, I'm going to tell him Kanye West put out this album and Jesus is in it. And I have this idea, like all these things. So we get in the car and David just starts speaking in tongues. And I was like, oh, I can't interrupt tongues right now. Like that's not going to happen. And then <laughs> Mama Hogan starts speaking in tongues. And I was like, oh, okay, I guess we're just going to be quiet now. And so we're driving and it's like a four hour drive. And so the whole time they're just speaking in tongues and I'm just looking out the window like, okay. So we get to the conference and he starts speaking in I don't know if you know him or not, but he raises the dead. And miracles and wonders follow him wherever he goes. And the first night of the conference was phenomenal, like just amazing. So then the next day, um, we're like going to the next conference and we get in the car and in my own head, I'm like, okay, this time I'm gonna say something. <laughs> and David starts making tugs. Mom, how to start speaking tongues? And I'm like, oh my gosh, you can't ever interrupt tongues. Like, I don't know what to do. And I'm still kind of embarrassed. Like, should I speak in tongues? Like, I don't know. I just, it took me a few days. It took me about three or four days. And finally, I'm like, I know, I know how this is going. We're going to get in the car. We're going to all speak in tongues. <laughs> so I get in the car, happens again. And then this time I'm like, I've already, I know how to speak in tongues. I've done this for years. I can do this. And so I'm like speaking tongues really quietly. And I'm just like looking out the window and we're on the way to the airport this time for the next conference in a different place. And, um, Holy ghost just fills the car and it was just so, so strong. And I'm like, Oh my gosh, this is it. Like he is just always speaking in tongues. He cultivates the spirit goes and raises the dead. I'm like, this is, this is the key. And so now everywhere we go for the rest of the month or two months, um, it's just, we get in the car, we speak in tongues. And it's not that there wasn't any conversation or talking, there was, but it just was so like, cultivating of the Holy Spirit everywhere we went from the airport to when we're in the car, when we're waiting for something before a pastor comes and picks us up for the next place. It was like this time that you just saw that this is how he lives his life. Just always speaking to the Holy Spirit. And it changed me forever. And now I'm like, oh, so I don't have to just speak in tongues when I'm praying for somebody or on my own for like 30 seconds, like just speak in tongues all the time, 24 seven, walking to the beach, going to work in your car. Like sometimes I'll just be like listening to something on the radio. It's not even Christian. And I'm like, oh, I just need to speak in tongues. And I'm still playing, but I'm just speaking in tongues over something. And so, yeah, that's my testimony. <laughs> Sharon Aubrey, thank you. He says this, uh, Revelation 22, 12, look, I am coming soon. My reward is with me. And I just want to say about that, that, uh, that every time we ask for, his reward is with him. It's always with him. He wants to deliver it personally to us. So whenever we ask for any kind of provision or any kind of reward that he wants to give to us or any kind of good and perfect gift, it's with him. So he comes. He doesn't hand it off from a distance. He comes and brings it himself. So the key is to get close to him because the reward is with him. So financially, that's what we need to uh, just be connected to the Lord. I'm excited for tonight. Um, I actually 
was pre- I heard Bob preach on Sunday about the power of speaking in tongues, and as you guys could hear about the testimonies, going to share about that tonight. And you know, for me, I didn't grow up, I wasn't raised in that atmosphere, I wasn't raised about knowing anything about speaking in tongues, so it was like a new thing for me. Um, but when I was about 20 years old, that's when I understood um, how powerful it is. And so I just want to preach on that tonight. Um, and the last three days, I was being very persistent about just going for it, praying in the Holy Spirit. It's one thing to preach on, another thing to really go after it and then see what he's going to do tonight. So I'm very expectant. And, you know, praying in the Holy Spirit is like you're uploading to God and then God downloads to us. So if we want more downloads of the Holy Spirit, more dreams, visions, words of knowledge, it's our responsibility to upload to him and then he downloads to us because the measure we use is measure back. And so if we want more revelation, that's why Paul, who wrote two thirds of the New Testament, he says, I thank my God, I pray in tongues more than all of you. So he probably had some sort of revelation on the power of praying in tongues, okay? And so I believe the reason why he got a lot of revelation here and was writing down the, the verses because the Holy Spirit was downloading to him, okay? And so I think he's someone that's probably important to maybe follow his example, maybe a little bit, you know? So anyways, um, yeah, Lord, we just thank you for tonight. We just say, Jesus, would you be glorified? And we want to um, utilize every gift you've given us, everything, that we don't want to um, have anything to the side, unused, in Jesus' name. Okay, so I want to start off with just a testimony. And you guys have probably heard this before, but I want to share again. Uh, my buddy was traveling to New Zealand, and he's a prophet, goes all over the world. And the Lord said, I want you to share Jesus to the guy in the front row. And the guy in the front row was a big rugby player, all tatted up, and he was on the All Blacks team, if you guys know rugby. But my buddy, he's more introverted. He's more like, eh, I don't know if I really want to. And the plane started descending down. So I better just obey the Lord. And anytime that the plane also is going down or there's turbulence, that's a really good opportunity to share Jesus with people too. Because you never know, hey, do you know where you're going to go tomorrow? What happens if this, you know, the plane were to go down? That's, use that to your advantage. I'm serious. There's turbulence. It's a little windy. You know, people are afraid. Use that to your advantage to share Jesus. You know, if this goes down, you know, you got to know where you're going. <laughs> So anyway, he goes up to the guy in the front row, and he says, hey, can I just pray for you? And he goes, yeah, that's fine. I mean, it doesn't hurt to have extra prayer to land the plane. So he sits right next to him, and um, he just starts praying like a normal prayer. And then all of a sudden gets in the anointing, and the Holy Spirit just starts taking over his prayer language, and he starts going in the Spirit. And then he kind of loses track of time. And he looks up and he sees this big grown man in full tears. And the man, he's, you know, he's like, how many times have you been to New Zealand? And my buddy goes, I've never been. He goes, I don't believe you. He, he goes, show me your passport. He showed him his passport, never been to New Zealand. He goes, you just, you perfectly spoke my native dialect that like no one knows. And he told me things about my life and my wife's life that I don't even know. What is your source? He said, Jesus, Jesus is the one. He's the only way to the Father. And he was a Mormon. He gave his life to Jesus right there in the airplane, right there because of, yeah, um, because of one man's obedience to simply obey the Holy Spirit and really yield to the Holy Spirit. Because that's what praying in tongues is. It's like we don't know how to pray. It's simply fully yielding to Holy Spirit, just pray through me. I don't know what to pray for. I don't know how to. And anyways, they land the plane. He, he goes, you need to meet my family. And he had a family of about 70 people. And the guy that just got saved simply shared his testimony of what happened. And their whole family got saved. They're all Mormons. And they gave their life to Jesus. And so it says, when you get saved, you and your whole household will come to the Lord. And that was the man of peace. He was the guy of favor for the family. So if we want to save a whole family, find the guy that carries the favor or the woman that has the favor for the whole family, okay? 
Um, and so that's pretty fun. That awesome. And so that's actually the first gift that God gave the church was actually praying in different languages. So this was like if there was different languages here that the Holy Spirit supernaturally downloads a different language to you and you start prophesying to them. So let's say I need to speak Spanish to someone. The Holy Spirit would download Spanish and I'm prophesying to someone in Spanish. So that's what happened in the book of Acts. That's, the, that's how the first church started. So that'd be an amazing meeting to be at. My God is incredible. This is happening in the first church service. Let's keep it going. And I think a lot of times the reason why we don't see it is because we're living in America where we don't need to speak different languages as much. It could be Spanish, but oftentimes we, we're kind of just speaking English. So it's actually an evangelism tool. In the Great Commission, <clears throat> it actually says, where is it at? Sorry, one second. Mark 16, 15 <clears throat> says, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned, and these signs will follow those who believe. In my name they will cast out demons, and they will speak with new tongues. So this new tongue here, it's talking about a tongue to speak in different languages, because if you go around the world, you don't know all the different languages. So this is an evangelism tongue. Does that make sense? <clears throat> Has anyone here been supernaturally downloaded another language that you ever had? Don't ever go at once. Okay, it looks like you guys. <laughs> okay. And so 1 Corinthians 14, 5, Paul says, I wish you guys all spoke with tongues. Okay, so I know, I believe the reason why this is such a debated topic is because the enemy knows how powerful it is. He's really threatened by, by believers praying in the Holy Spirit. He's very afraid of it. And that's why it's so, it can be controversial, but the thing is, I go to the Word of God, and what does Jesus say in His Word? I don't care what one pastor says, i got to go to the written Word of God. You know, this was not a Pentecostal's idea, this was the Lord's original design for believers. So I'm going to take Him at His Word, okay? I don't think when we go to heaven, God's going to be like, I can't believe you actually took me at my Word. I'm so mad at you. Why didn't you trust Freddie? You know, of course not. I don't care what Freddie thinks. I'm going to be unapologetic for the baptism of the Holy Spirit and praying in tongues as a believer. And we can't expect the world to like us if we're fully immersed with Jesus and his word. We can't, like, we can't accept, oh, I need the acceptance of man and then fully God. When we go fully for Jesus and in the Holy Spirit, the world's not going to like that. They're going to think we're crazy, but I'm not going to try to win their, you know, favor. I'm getting the Lord's. Okay, so there's results. Seventy people in one day get saved because one guy prays in tongues. That's just one example. There's examples all over the world. <clears throat> and then Paul says in 1 Corinthians 14, 18, I thank God that I speak in tongues more than all of you. Okay, so he's pretty, you know, he never said that about the prophetic about evangelism, about, you know, reading. He, that's the only time he said, I thank my God that I do this more than any of you guys. Okay? And so that's the one tongue, and there's another tongue which would have an interpretation. So let's say I'm up here right now. Let's say I have a five-minute tongue. And if I want to edify the church, I want to bring a message to the church, then that tongue would have an interpretation. Does that make sense? Okay, there's times in worship that we could all pray in the Holy Spirit. That's amazing. But if I want to bring a prophecy to the church, that comes with interpretation. So it says that in 1 Corinthians 14, verse 6. But now, brethren, if I come to speaking with tongues, what shall I profit you unless I speak to you either by revelation, by knowledge, by prophesying, or by teaching? So likewise you, unless you utter by the tongue words easy to understand, how will it be known what is spoken? For you'll be speaking into the air. Therefore, if I do not know the meaning of the language, I'll be a foreigner to him who speaks, and he who speaks will be a foreigner to me. So the first tongue is you're actually able to speak to foreigners because you have that language. This tongue, it's a foreigner until there's an interpretation. Okay, does that make sense? 
So even so, since you're zealous for spiritual gifts, let it be for the edification of the church that you seek to excel. Then it says, therefore, let him who speaks in a tongue pray that he may interpret. Okay, so this is from the pulpit, from the front, if I want to edify the church. I, let's say I came to a different church and I just spoke in tongues for 10 minutes and then said, all right, see you guys. That wouldn't benefit the church. Does it make sense? Okay, anyways, you guys got the message. <laughs> but I think a lot of times, like in a service, we got to understand that every person has a gift to bring to the table. I think it's not the consumer base where what am I going to get out of it? Yeah, we want to get something out of it, but every person has something to give. It says in 1 Corinthians 14, 26, How is it then, brethren, whenever you come together, each of you has a psalm, has a teaching, has a tongue, has a revelation, has an interpretation. Let all things be done for edification, if anyone speaks in a tongue, let there be two or at the most three, each in turn, and let the one interpret. So that's from the front. Okay, and it says if there's no interpreter, let him keep silent at church, let him speak to himself and to God. Okay, so that is from up here. And that would be amazing that that was God's original design for church, is that every person would have, okay, that one has a revelation, that person has a teaching, that one has a tongue, and then someone to follow with an interpretation of that. That'd be an exciting service to be at. You know? I think that's incredible. It wasn't just someone teaching. It was everyone had something to bring. <clears throat> but the, you know, I heard a story. Have you guys heard of John Bevere? He was um, traveling like in Europe. And he's on the way to his meeting. And some random stranger starts just sharing in tongues to him. And he's kind of caught off guard. He's like, what is this guy? This is kind of weird. And then 10 seconds later, that stranger interprets his own tongues. And it was the exact message that he was planning on preaching on that night. It was to the T. So obviously there's some power behind doing the stuff. And that's exciting. <laughs> so next time, if you guys want to prophesy what I'm going to preach on, you know, praying tongues over me and then give the interpretation. <laughs> but this is the one I want to focus on. So those are the two tongues that are horizontal. This, the third one, is between just you and God. Okay? And so it says in 1 Corinthians 14, 2, For one who speaks in a tongue speaks not to men but to God, for no one understands him. He utters mysteries in the Spirit. So I think a lot of times we're going through like a hard situation. There's a mountain in the way. We don't know how to get over the mountain, how to get over that wall. And praying the Holy Spirit utters mysteries to the Lord and unlocks prison doors. You know, like Bob said on Sunday, there's 31,000 Bible verses. And imagine having 31,000 keys. And when we pray in the Holy Spirit, it's getting the rhema word of God for your exact situation. It's getting the exact key you need to unlock the door. It's uttering mysteries to the Lord that you can't understand in your intellect, but it's going in the Holy Spirit because he knows all things. He knows all solutions to every problem. So when we go in the Holy Spirit, we're unlocking the prison doors. You know, maybe we've tried to overcome something for a long time, maybe even a health issue, whatever it is, we got to get in the Holy Spirit and ask for revelation for what that key is to unlock. It's not about trying harder. It's about getting in the Holy Spirit and letting Him flow, letting Him give you the keys to your door. Okay? I was even, this was on Sunday night because I've been fired up for that message and I've been praying the Holy Spirit a lot the last three days, like a lot. <laughs> Like maybe three or four hours per day. And I feel that what I feel is very charged up. I feel very strong. Okay. Like dependent on the Holy Spirit, but I feel really energized. Like I haven't had coffee in like nine hours, but I feel really energized. I feel really strengthened. I'm like, hey, let's go. Like I feel like I can do an all nighter or something. That's what it feels like. And it also feels like you're prepared for the situation that you're about to go into. Like you feel equipped. You just feel ready. You just feel like, okay, God, let's go. You feel like the, the, the sword is sharpened. 
and you're just ready. And so I was even, uh, I played basketball last night and I'm, I drove from Orchid to Slow, so like 50 minutes, just praying in the Holy Spirit. And there was fruit from that because I was scoring. I was like hitting every hoop. I hit like three game winners. I'm kidding. So, I, you know, it says when you pray in the Holy Spirit, it actually builds up your, your, not just your inner man, but your whole self. So it actually builds your, your physical, your emotional, and your spiritual. Okay? And so that's what it says right in 1 Corinthians 14.4. The one who speaks in a tongue builds up himself. So it actually bring, it repairs ourself. It repairs our physical body. It builds us up. Jude 1.20, but you, beloved, building yourselves up in the most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit. And it's like we have all this material, but the Holy Spirit brings it into building a building. We can have all these verses, but we need the Holy Spirit to build it together. And so one key or one benefit for praying in the Holy Spirit is you're praying the perfect will of God. Because right now Jesus is sitting at the right hand of the Father and is interceding for us right now. So Jesus has the perfect prayers right now. So when we pray in the Holy Spirit, we're coming into alignment with what Jesus is praying over us. He doesn't have a bad prayer ever. He's never had one bad prayer. So we get in the Holy Spirit. We're coming to alignment with his perfect prayers for us. And it says it in Romans 8, I'm going to start in 25. If we hope for what we do not see, we eagerly wait for it with perseverance. So I think the best time when we're waiting for a promise, we're waiting for something to happen, is the verse after. Likewise, the Spirit also helps us in our weakness, We do not know what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Now he who searches the hearts knows what the mind of the Spirit is because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. So right there, he searches our hearts, he knows what's going on, but he knows the mind of the Spirit to give us the solution. So Sunday night I was praying, and I, sometimes you can't just have like whisper prayers. You got to go for it. You got to charge it. Sometimes yelling is okay. <laughs> Shouting it, you know. I was going to give an example, but it might scare a couple people. Um, and then this is really amazing. Ask for the interpretation of your own tongues. God's given us the anointing to actually interpret our own tongues. So that's going to encourage us more if we can actually know what we just pray in the Holy Spirit. And so I did that Sunday night. Bob was talking about it. I was like, okay, I'm going to interpret my own tongues. And then I'm driving home. And I, after I finished praying, I saw this small vision. And it was pliers. And it took out a little bug out of my ear. They took it out. I was like, okay, whatever that was. And it was interesting because last month I was feeling kind of foggy. I was feeling kind of hazy. And I feel like emotionally, like, like kind of sick. And it was like when I was praying the Holy Spirit, the pliers took out the bug. You know that saying, I want to put a bug in your ear? That's actually true. So you don't want to put bug in people's ears. But the Holy Spirit will take it out. That was interesting. And then the Lord showed me a vision right after that, um, that I was praying for an elderly couple. They were African American and they were like wealthy. And I saw like their house and their gate. And I was somehow, I was just praying for them. I don't even know what I was saying, but the Lord said, you were praying for that couple. So, okay, Lord. So, so ask the Lord for interpretation of your tongues. Okay. And you might not get it right then. You might get a dream that night. You might get a small vision the next day. So it's up to the Lord to download the revelation. It's up to us to upload it to him by praying in the Holy Spirit. Okay? Another thing, Ephesians 6, 17, it says, Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, which means rhema, the spoken word, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit. So when we're praying in the Holy Spirit, that releases the rhema of God. But it's up to His timing when He releases it. So we can't force visions to come or dreams, but I can pray in the Holy Spirit for it to open up. 
okay? Another key is it just brings refreshment. It simply, it says in Isaiah, it says, to whom he said, sorry, I'm going to start in um, verse 11 of Isaiah 28. For with stammering lips and another tongue, he will speak to the people to whom he said, this is the rest with which you may cause the weary to rest. And this is the refreshing, yet they would not hear it. They didn't want it that way. They wanted a certain way. But the word of the Lord was to them precept upon precept, line upon line. So they want it line upon line, precept upon precept. But the Lord was releasing the refreshment through actually praying in tongues. Okay? So if you don't like that, you know, form, it's not a formula. You don't like that, you got to repent and say, Lord, I'm sorry that I don't like praying in the Holy Spirit. And it's not reserved just for quote unquote charismatics, it's for all believers. It's not just for the, the kind of the, oh, the really, no, it's for all believers, it's for. If you're born again, you give your life to Jesus, that gift's for you. And another thing that Paul brought up, I'm just, I don't know, I'm inspired. Um, when you're given tools to complete a race, okay, you're going to use this, okay, use the hammer, okay, have this. <laughs> you want to use every tool that is given to you. If you say, yeah, I'm good, I don't need this, I don't need that. You're probably not going to, it's going to be tougher to complete the race. So everything available, I want to use. Go. Okay. 1 Corinthians 14, 13, and this is about interpreting our own tongues. It says, therefore, let him who speaks in a tongue pray that he may interpret. So we just got to simply ask. If we don't ask for it, we're not going to get it. For if I pray in a tongue, my spirit prays, but my understanding is unfruitful. What is the conclusion then? I will pray with the spirit, and I'll also pray with the understanding. So we're praying in the Holy Spirit, then we're going to pray that we get understanding of what we just prayed. I will sing with the Spirit. I will also sing with understanding. There was a, this is kind of a funny story. My buddy, he's a barista, and he doesn't really believe in the gifts of the Spirit. And he went to Mexico. This is hilarious. Okay. <laughs> And they, the leader, they went in a, a little circle to pray. And the leader starts uh, speaking to the team in English of where they're going to go that day, their instructions. And, you know, then the prayer was over. <laughs> and then he asked her in English, hey, so, uh, you know, when you said this, do we go like right or left? And then she looks at him like, no, no comprendo uh, inglés, no comprendo. And so the Lord supernaturally downloaded English to her to communicate, because there was a language barrier, what to do. And so that's amazing. So it's not even for salvation for people. It's also just to communicate to people when there's a language gap. Okay? So if you guys want to start experiencing that kind of stuff, maybe go to Mexico. Maybe go to different countries where that's needed. Seriously. Because if we never need it, we're not going to see it really happen. Okay? And that's why in the book of Acts, there was like 12 different nations represented and that many different downloads people were getting. And we need more diversity in the church too. More the merrier. Um, and here's another example. This is just in, the, in Acts chapter 10. Not just. I didn't mean to say just. It's, it's the word. Acts 10, 44. While Peter was still speaking these words... So he's just sharing the gospel. So it's like a meeting like this. It says, The Holy Spirit fell upon all those who heard the word, and others of the circumcision who believed were astonished. As many as came with Peter, because the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out on the Gentiles also, for they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. And so that would be an incredible meeting to be at Peter's preaching and the Holy Spirit just comes upon the Gentiles and they're praying in tongues right then. You know, the thing about the Holy Spirit too, he's the God of order, but sometimes godly order is different than man's order. That was God's intention right there to bring the Holy Spirit. Okay? And so that's interesting. Like, what if you wanted to right now? And there's about nine people that start praying in tongues. And that was God's idea though. 
Okay, so that's what it comes down to. Yes, the God, he's the God of order, but I want to be aware of how the wind blows left and right because we can't control the wind. The wind can flow at any time, and we got to be sensitive to the wind. I mean, I remember <laughs> a few months ago, there was the door open just a little bit, but this wind came in right when it started talking about like Pentecost, and it was like rolling around. I'm like, you can't manufacture that. It's either the Lord does it or he doesn't, okay? And so the best thing that we can do, like if you want the, the Holy Spirit, if you want the, the gifts to flow, we got to simply ask, okay? You have not because you ask not. And I think to have a spiritual discipline is very important. If we only pray in tongues when we want to, what if you only went to the gym when you want to go? Okay, so... It's a discipline. Sometimes the times we don't want to the most are the times we need to do it the most. And so I think setting aside time, maybe 30 minutes a day, where I'm just going to pray in the Holy Spirit. And you have every day. You just be consistent. And sometimes we stop because we don't see results the day of, but you're not going to see instantaneous results a weekend to go in the gym or something. So like give it a month. Give it a month, maybe an hour a day. You know, we do four hours of watching a movie. Why not give them an hour to just pray in the Holy Spirit? What a great day to start off, start it off, just pray in the Holy Ghost. And I think the enemy does not like it. And I think people are even getting probably thoughts right now. Oh, that's foolish. Oh, that's a waste of time. I don't think that's Jesus speaking to you. I think that's the enemy very afraid if you were to actually start doing that and seeing the results that would happen. And it says it builds you up. So when you build something, it's actually going to require strength. It's not always going to be fun, but it's going to be worth it. And you're going to see the results of it. Okay, and you get strengthened. If you get strengthened, that means it's going to require some strength to get strengthened. It's not always going to be fun. So if we only treat it like it's for fun, we might do it once a week. And it is enjoyable, but it's not always going to be just, you know, joyful. Is that okay to say? <laughs> okay, I got one more. I'm trying to think of another testimony. Um, I don't know. I'll give it one a little bit later, but one more scripture I want to share. And then I want to pray for people that they would, if you haven't gotten baptized in the Holy Spirit, you've never spoken in tongues, that we pray for you guys. Okay? And maybe you've never gotten the interpretation of your own tongues. We want to pray for that too. But I want to pray that you would, it would happen tonight. Um, but Acts 19, verse 1, it says, It happened while Apollos was at Corinth, that Paul, having passed through the upper regions, came to Ephesus, and finding some disciples, he said to them, Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? So they said to him, We have not so much as heard whether there is a Holy Spirit. And he said to them, into what then were you baptized? And they said, into John's baptism. Then Paul said, John indeed baptized with a baptism of repentance, saying to the people that day they should believe on him who would come after him, that is on the Christ Jesus. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul had laid hands on them, the Holy Spirit came upon them and they spoke with tongues and prophesied. And so that, I'm just going to take God at his word. If that's what happened, we could simply just do the word of God. And so that we're going to give the Holy Spirit time just to simply do that. Okay, simple as that. And we're not going to even, the key was, yes, the leaders, they laid hands on them. So there's a key in transference. And the Holy Spirit came upon them. But even if you don't feel anything at all, God honors simple faith of just taking action. Like the same thing with a baby that starts talking to his dad. Even if he says one syllable, that's amazing. So it's not about, oh my gosh, was that the right thing? Honestly, to this day, I still get those thoughts sometimes. Oh, that's just gibberish. Oh, that's just nothing. But you go past that. Obviously, Jesus isn't saying that. And honestly, if you just go to the Lord, and you're just, you just say, God, just Holy Spirit, pray through me. I don't know how to do this. You go in humility. Say, Holy Spirit, intercede through me. Intercede the perfect will of God. And, and then you just ask him, interpret the, the tongues, you know. And so 
That's what I simply want to just ask that the Lord would do tonight. Um, and just to close, it's like we've, we hear people say, yeah, you know, we have the full inheritance. Yes, we have the fullness of God. Yes, that's true. It's one thing to have $10 billion in your bank account. It's another thing to know how to access those funds. Okay? And so just because we have $10 billion doesn't mean we're actually using what we have. And so I believe when we pray in the Holy Spirit, it's accessing what's already ours, okay? It's opening the door to the supernatural. And when I was praying in the Holy Spirit the other day, I'm praying to, Quint to Contessa, and the night prior I heard um, a message, and it said, praying in the Holy Spirit is the gateway to the supernatural. So I'm thinking, okay, that makes sense. It's a gateway to all the gifts and healing. And so I said, Lord, I want confirmation. And then that next morning, I'm, I'm driving to the coffee shop to, you know, research this. And I see this big billboard that I've, ne I've driven by this so many times. And it said, Gateway to Oceano. And it was, just, it was like bold letters, Gateway. I was like, oh my gosh. <laughs> so the simplicity, if we want to see the supernatural break out like David Hogan, you know, he's praying the Holy Spirit for hours. And if we want to see these amazing things happen, I believe this is a huge key to the supernatural. Okay? And so, I don't know. I was just asking the Lord, God, what is the key? What's the key if we really hit revival and the Holy Spirit really poured out? And this has put on my heart, this message. Because we all, we all, I, want a, I want an outpouring of the Holy Spirit. I don't want to just have a church service. I want an outpouring where it's hitting... The five cities, it's going up to Reading, down to San Diego. And this is a huge key, okay? And so if you don't like it, then just say, sorry, Lord, I want to enjoy, I need, I need it. Okay? Because he's actually not, con you know, he's not really worried if you like it or not. It's the truth. He's not going to be swayed by your opinion, okay? So anyways, let's have the worship come up. My brother didn't ask me to share a testimony, but I, I'll share a little one. I, for years, I've also wanted to um, pray in tongues, and it's never really come upon me. Like, you know, people get hit and, you know, <laughs> it was more so, I feel like the Lord, and I was kind of asking for it, and I, I just feel like the Lord say, um, just do it like as a, your, your small infant son crying out to your father and his his own language and his own, you know, just his faith, knowing that uh, his his father will hear and answer. Um, so yeah, that's and so that's been my journey in in, in my prayer language, and I, uh, the Lord has been faithful and just strengthened me, answering prayers, and um, it's been really cool. Your promises are yes and amen. 
um, when I, when when we first started service tonight during worship and in between, I, I saw and Lord just kind of gives me visions and not really just seeing in the spirit. And um, I saw an arm, and it was just a. It wasn't mine because it was really big and strong, <laughs> and it, it was like cut, you know. It was, it was and uh, it was like the little emoji, you know. This was this arm, just wham, just like bodybuilder arm, and it was just like the arm, arm of God, like in this place, just wham. And so, just throughout the service, just hearing about strengthening and and speaking in tongues and how that strengthens, and I just see that as the body of Christ, man, we're just supposed to be strong and even that gift is going to strengthen us and and if you read the testimonies in the in the bible you know about the lord's strong arm um it 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 wiped out enemies you know it 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 brought provision it brought freedom um so yeah i just see that for for us as a church body and being strengthened with the gifts of tongues Mm -hmm.